In this video, we're going to take a look at the projection node in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this video, I'm using the machinery 01.c4d scene. And so let's start by going into the node editor. So I'll go to materials, Octane node editor. Let's push this over here. And I'm going to graph this metal material that's applied to our surface here. And let's start by mapping an image texture to the materials diffuse and specular channel. So I'm going to create an image texture and plug it into diffuse and plug it into specular. And then let's go to the options for this image texture and open up our browser. I'm going to use the uh, panel 06 diffuse image. We'll copy it. And then let's go in here and under IOR mode, I'm going to set this to artistic. And there we can see. Now I've updated the render and we can see it appearing on the surface here. So uh, the image is mapped based on the object's UVs, which might not always be what we want, especially if the object we have doesn't have very good or consistent UVs which happens more often than it should. Um, so what we can do is we can use a projection node to bypass the UVs. So I'm gonna create a projection node and I'm gonna plug it into the projection input of our diffuse texture. Now, of course, by default, the texture projection is based on the object UVs. That's what mesh UV means. But if I open this menu, you can see we have a number of different ways to map the uh, image other than just mesh UVs. So for example, if I set this to box, it will map the image from six different sides. Of course, we don't see anything because we need to adjust the size of the image and the projection. So I'm going to take the uh, texture projection node here and go into the internal transform settings and set lock X aspect ratio for the scale. So that way they're scaling uniformly. And if I bring this down now, we can see the uh, texture is being uh, projected from six different sides. Now, of course, you can translate and rotate um, the projection using the slider, but if you want to use something a bit more, um, let's say, interactive, we can actually use a null object as a controller so we can manipulate it in 3D. So let's create a null object and select it here. Let me move it over in the scene. And then we can go to this field right here click our little arrow and select that null. You'll see it appears in the field right here. And now I can actually use that null object to interactively uh, move the projection around. And this works well for translate and rotate. If I need to get rid of it, I'll just click on this arrow and choose clear. Now the other types of projection, some of them are fairly self-explanatory, like cylindrical is like box, except it's wrapping the texture as if the object was cylindrical, and it works better for cylindrical objects, right? Obviously. And then we also have a spherical, so again, this works well when the object is more spherically shaped. So those are fairly obvious. The OSL projection and OSL UV, I'll talk about that in a separate video on OSL. Mesh UV we've already talked about, so let's talk about perspective. So if I turn on perspective, this will basically map the texture based on a perspective view. So this doesn't look terribly exciting at the moment, but what you can do is you can connect this to a specific camera so that you can do camera projection, which is a popular way to do things like map paintings or like you know rock faces or the surfaces of large buildings that are static in the scene. So let's create a new camera And let's rename it. We'll call this cam projector. Go to our texture projection node, just like we did with the no. I'll click on this arrow and select cam projector. And of course, now let's actually select cam projector and move it. Here 
And let's actually look through Cam Projector and refresh the scene. And maybe fix that scale. That's probably what's causing us the issue. Yep, sure enough. You can see as I zoom in with the projecting camera, the image stays static. And as I move around, you can see that the image is staying static as well because it's being projected from this camera that I'm currently looking through. So if I switch to a different camera, it's going to look kind of odd from other views. It depends on the view that you're looking at it from. But I can move the original camera around. And just like with the null, it's transforming that texture projection. So next, let's take a look at using triplanar projection. So in a previous video, we talked about the triplanar texture which you can find down here. This is the triplanar projection node, and they're actually meant to work together. So let's start by creating a triplanar texture. And I'm going to disconnect the image texture from the diffuse and the specular. So let's just move this out of the way for the time being. And I'm going to connect the triplanar texture to the diffuse and the specular. And next, I'm going to create a checker texture. Do a checker texture, and I'm going to connect this to positive x, negative x, those two positive, positive z, and negative z. And just to help make things look as obvious as possible, I'm also going to create an RGB spectrum texture and connect this to positive Y and negative Y. And let's make this bright red. Okay, so as we saw in the previous video on the triplanar texture, you can see that our checker texture appears in both X and Z directions, where our, and our red color, the RGB spectrum, is being projected along the Y axis, so the top positive and negative. Don't see the negative because it's below the plane here, but you get the idea. But you can also see that the checker texture is being mapped or projected on the surface based on the UV. So we don't have a very consistent pattern here. It's different sizes based on the UVs of the different parts of the model. So not the greatest situation if we want to create nice quick texture without having to deal with doing with the UVs. So this is where the uh, triplanar projection comes in. So let's create a projection node, and I'm going to set it to triplanar. And now I'm going to plug this into the checks projection. And of course, our checker pattern goes away because we've got to scale it. We've got to transform it. So what we can do now is create a new transform for our checker pattern here. So I'm going to create UBW transform. So it just automatically adds this node. Let's move it up here and scale it down. And now you can start to see the benefit of using that triplanar uh, projection. We have a nice consistent pattern that goes all the way across the surface. And I've added that red color just to show you how it can be different textures plugged into the triplanar projection or the same one. So we could actually uh, also plug this into our positive and negative Y, and we have a nice sort of consistent projection. At this moment, it's kind of a bit like the uh, box projection in a way, but you can do a bit more with this uh, because of the ability to add in different textures here. And then, of course, we have this transform, which we can use to transform the, our checker pattern, right? So we can select this and scale it and translate it and rotate it, etc. We also have a transform input on our triplanar um, texture node. So I can go down here and let's actually, let's create a new transform and plug it in here. 
And now if I can rotate this, you can see now I'm rotating the entire projection. So you can see that red color is also rotating along with everything else. So it's ro rotating the entire triplanar projection scheme. So that's the basics of working with projection nodes in Octane for Cinema 4D.